Hello, and welcome to The Startup Perspective, part of our Battery and Electrification Summit, presented by Battery Technology Magazine and SAE International, with thanks to our sponsors, Comsol, A2 Mac One, Asahi Kasei, CPS, Misumi, and Tektronix. I'm Lisa Arrigo with SAE Media Group. The speakers in this 45-minute session are Dr. Timothy Holm, co-founder and CTO of QuantumScape, Jaron Meyersdorf, CEO and co-founder of StoreDot, Dr. Sirio Manganti, CTO of Psionic Energy. Our next speaker is Jaron Meyersdorf, CEO and co-founder of StoreDot. Jaron? Yes, hi. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, uh, for uh, joining this session. Uh, we are going to talk about the uh, number one problem of the adoption of electric vehicles. And the number one problem is, of course, uh, the range anxiety. So, uh, you know, it's all about the driver's experience. And uh, what Stoddard provides is a stress-free uh, EV charging and driving experience, just like, uh, you know, in, in a standard uh, vehicle uh, fueling. So the challenge and the main obstacles uh, when we deal with the range anxiety is, uh, sorry, I'm trying to advance the slides here. Okay. Uh, the charging anxiety is when you actually come to the charging station and uh, you know there are not enough outlets there or it just takes too long to charge uh, your vehicle. So we are focused on the battery technology and we work with our partners on the EV design, uh, such as Daimler, which is one of our key investors, and on the charging infrastructure, uh, such as with the charge point of British Petroleum, who is another uh, key investor. So uh, the focus is to optimize the miles per minute uh, of charging, and this is what we are uh, focused on. So uh, we are demonstrating today with our technology, which is also using silicon uh, in the anode, uh, we are demonstrating 17 uh, miles per minute, and uh, by we, we, in, we are, when we are in mass production, we'll show 20 uh, miles per minute. We call it XFC, Extreme Fast Charge. We are also working on the next generation, uh, which is Extreme Energy Density, and, we will and this is a solid-state solution, which will provide uh, 25 uh, miles uh, per minute. And we are already showing uh, prototypes of uh, uh, all these configurations. So just a little bit of uh, history about Stordot. Uh, we started about 10 years ago in Israel. Uh, totally today it was raised 130 million, 110 people, um, 35 of them are PhDs uh, in various areas of uh, uh, biochemistry, electrochemistry, material science, and so forth. Uh, we have about 100 patents, uh, most of them are granted, and a very strong uh, ecosystem of uh, investors that include Samsung and TDK and uh, Daimler and, and BP, and we do have a, a joint venture on the manufacturing with uh, EVE Energy as well. So the technology actually combines the organic chemistry capability, which is uh, what, how we protect the active materials such as silicon, and then we do use nanotechnology in order to enable the extreme fast charging. And a very strong team of data scientists that are actually looking at the millions of uh, data points that are coming from our cyclers, of the thousands of experiments that are happening concurrently, both in Israel and in China, in order to sift the information and pinpoint those uh, formulations that actually provide the best value. So it's important to understand that extreme fast charging is only possible with innovative battery technology. You cannot use the existing traditional graphite-based batteries if you want to really fast charge the, the uh, car, just not safe enough. So when we look at the uh, comparison of the cell, uh, of extreme fast charging with the conventional cell, you'll see that uh, actually we have a much better structure that uh, uses a very similar cathode uh, NMC811 capability, but, uh, but also uh, enables to reach higher densities with, uh, with the silicon. So the approach uh, uh, 
to, to deal with the challenges uh, of extreme fast charging, is, it has to be holistic. So we are dealing with the uh, metalloid and the nanoparticles design. We are dealing with the coated uh, uh, cathode material, new additives for the electrolyte, the battery in, uh, as a system, uh, and even the uh, charging uh, scheme that is being used at the charge point. So why silicon? I think everybody uh, already understands just that the, there's so much uh, potential to get higher energy uh, with silicon, but also uh, it enables in nanoparticles uh, much uh, faster charging. So uh, as we move to the next generations that include also solid state, uh, we are looking at uh, various configurations of lithium metal capabilities that we are uh, already uh, demonstrating. So in terms of roadmap, we are uh, moving from uh, what we are demonstrating today in mass production, which is a small form factor uh, silicon-based anode to uh, uh, an EV form factor that we already have A samples for, and then in 2028 uh, to move to uh, a solid-state solution. Uh, the reason is that solid state will take uh, several more years uh, to mature, and even though we are having, uh, say, exciting results in the lab uh, with the uh, solid state, it will still, still take us uh, several years uh, to mature this technology. Thank you very much. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you, uh, Duran. Duran, what is the best way to mitigate the known range anxiety? Also, how can we track the progress of such soft parameters over time? Hi. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, the issue of uh, range anxiety is uh, most easy uh, to measure with the uh, miles per minute. And this is why, you know, in, our, in my presentation, I emphasize the uh, ability to track uh, the experience of the driver through the miles per minute parameter uh, so even as the industry will move eventually, let's say in 2028, uh, into a solid state 450 or 500 uh, watt hour per kilogram solution, uh, we can still uh, keep improving on the miles per minute, even though the, the C rate uh, goes down, let's say, from uh, 6, in our case, to 4 uh, in the solid state solution. And this is where I mentioned that we can go up to 27 uh, miles per minute. So the experience of the driver is really, you know, you have a few minutes to charge your, your vehicle. How many miles do you actually receive? And this is our way to measure the, uh, this soft parameter of the range anxiety. Here's an interesting question from our audience, and it's addressed to all three presenters. Um, someone wants to know, what are the top challenges for solid-state technology becoming commercially available at scale? Interesting question. Um, who would like to start? Uh, Sura, Doran, Tim? Who would like to take a stab at answering that question? Uh, hi, Doran, I can start. Um, so I think uh, scaling up uh, a new technology uh, that uh, uses different uh, manufacturing facilities I think is the number one challenge. Uh, we've seen it in our first generation where, you know, even uh, when we uh, designed the process to be roll-to-roll -roll and to use uh, exactly the same, uh, same manufacturing lines, there are still issues with the thickness of the coating and, uh, you know, agglomerates of nanoparticles and things like that that takes a long time to stabilize even in a standard manufacturing line. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, with a new process that requires uh, ceramic materials and, uh, and lithium metal uh, in the process, uh, would require uh, a new design of the facility and the scale-up of such a process and facility uh, typically takes several years. So I think in terms of the bottleneck of taking this technology to market, uh, we are looking at several years of scale-up uh, in the manufacturing lines. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I might, uh, well, I might like to respond to that. So I think this is Doran Tim. Is, okay. is... Thanks, Tim. Yeah, this is Tim. I think I agree with Doran that it will take several years. That's what's in our plans as well. Um, but realistically, you know, any new battery factory is going to take a year plus to, to install at capacity. Um, so I think the slightly different spin I would put on it is 
Separators are typically manufactured in a different facility and shipped to a battery assembly or battery manufacturing plant. And it would be similar in our case, we could manufacture the separator and then um, basically replace the current separator manufacturing process with our separator manufacturing process. And then we've designed our uh, the rest of our cell to be as compatible as possible with lithium ion today. So for example, the cathode, which is the main other component in our cell because we don't manufacture the anode. I want to thank our speakers for being with us and sharing uh, their insight with us today. It really has been wonderful.